everybody. So when the energetic folks at uh, TEDx Shivnadar uh, approached me to give a talk, I decided to be both lazy and take on a challenge all at the same time. So I was lazy by deciding to talk on something that I do for a living, so I don't have to really think I do this all the time. So let's talk about my current passion, what I do, so I don't have to prepare so much. That was the lazy part. The challenge was when they told me the audience is going to be people from all walks of life, all departments, all backgrounds, you got to be able to explain bleeding edge technology that it actually makes sense for everybody. So I said that's a reasonable trade-off, lazy and challenge at the same time. But another challenge that I didn't discover until tomorrow, today morning was that I'm supposed to be in this little red carpet. And that's a new challenge for me, because normally in talks, I pace. I actually calculated that 18 minutes, I would burn about 120 calories. So now, if I move outside this little uh, chakra view, somebody just shout, and I will move back into the red zone. But with that, I plan to talk about my current favorite passion, blockchain. And I'm going to come to it with the first word, chaos. So what comes to mind when you think of chaos? Disorder, confusion, inefficiency, things not quite right, different people thinking different things. Well, I didn't know this until now. I thought we lived in a beautiful, digital, amazingly interconnected world. But business networks, by the way, are amazingly chaotic. And one of the examples there, the network on top has you know, a bank, an auditor, an insurance, a customer. It could be you and me going for a home loan. It could be a company approaching a bank for a working loan. But that's the ecosystem that has to come together to give that person that product. And, and think of that, that's a business network, right? We all think that when we go shopping or do something, it's just that entity and us. But behind that is an entire ecosystem that has to come together. And these ecosystems today, even if they are very digital and connected, are amazingly inefficient. Um, I think you will realize this now if you've ever tried to purchase a loan or you run a company and ask for a loan, you will start with providing documentation to your bank. Then the same documentation will be asked three times over by the insurance company. Two years later, when the bank is audited to figure out whether they gave you the loan, the bank will be asked to provide that same information to that auditor, and on and on and on. You know, why does this happen? It happens because we build business networks like spaghetti. You see the stuff in the middle that looks like spaghetti. And then the reason it looks that way, and I'm going to come to the root cause, but what that means is they are inefficient. We do the same thing over and over again. Expensive. That's where all the fees come from, by the way. It's duplicated. The fact that it, you took a loan for however amount at that percentage point probably sits in about every database of every person in that business network. And then when you duplicate, you are going to make mistakes. So data is mismatched. And then what do we end up doing? We end up spending a lot of money reconciling and making sure. And that leads to fraud and dispute. And this was a revelation for me because you know I thought things were great. What it turns out is this is true for every business network. Think payment network. Think logistics network. Imagine one-click shopping on Amazon. There's an entire network behind that actually gets you the product. Think payment networks. Think supply chain networks. And, and the root cause of all of these things is while they are connected, they don't have a common place of a single source of truth. One place, one piece of data that everybody works off that removes all of the bad things you see on the chart. I'm going to give you a particularly egregious example of what's happening. International logistics. It's not something any of us, unless you are in that industry, uh, really worry about. But some of the statistics there. Think about a batch of flowers or a batch of mangoes going from, I don't know, Mombasa to Georgia, for example. On average, that journey requires about 30 plus organizations to come together, 200 plus interactions between these organizations, hundreds of pieces of documents. And this is the funniest part. Several hundred dollars doing express mail of those documents so that the, the actual it can be released from the port. Now, why does it happen? Why so many organizations? Think about it. Ships don't go from one place to the other. You've got to have trucks, warehouses, customs agencies, prohibited goods. You have, somebody has to check. And it touches many ports. So there are about all these organizations. And today, Imagine doing a spaghetti over 30 organizations opposed to four of them, it looks even worse. And the funniest part to me was the fact that 
on average for a container, about $250 worth of paper shipping cost is spent. Just moving paper documents so that in Georgia they can actually release the container and actually ship the avocado or the flower to wherever it needs to go. Now, at the root of all of this, at the root of all of this inefficiency is lack of trust. So if there is one word you carry away from this, trust, it was the root cause for this. And why is that? Because if in all these networks, they all trusted one person. They could all share their data with that one person. That one person would mediate everything. And they would be like God, but they would know everything, but you know, life would be easy. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen. A lot of these networks involve competitors. It involves people who want to share a little bit of data, but not everything. I'm happy to share when my ship is going to arrive, but I'm not going to share the contractual agreement between that person and me in terms of how much he's supposed to pay because I might charge you a different rate. I'm not going to share that. So the problem we have today is business networks share, want to share a few, want to protect a few, and we have never had an infrastructure, a data management, a digital data management infrastructure that lets us do that effectively. And that is the revolution we are starting to see with the technology of blockchain. Blockchain replaces that spaghetti you saw in the middle with a coherent thing called, what we're gonna call a shared ledger. I'll tell you what that means. But it provides the following. It provides a single shared source of truth. So one place from which everybody in that ecosystem who needs to share data. If you want to know when that ship actually delivered, that's one place. You don't have to debate that there was a late delivery and therefore whether you have to pay a fine. Um, important thing I told you, right? People are going to share, the, especially businesses, unless they have guarantees about security and immutability. Immutability that if I recorded something on that ledger, you as a competitor are not going to be able to change it because that stuff happens. And, un and you know, I'm not going to share until you tell me that the infrastructure I'm using, this blockchain, is going to be immutable and tamper-proof and completely secure. That's the cusp of this technology that we are on. Now, I want a show of hands of people who have heard the word blockchain before. Okay, about 25% of the audience. Who have been surprised so far that I've been speaking for about eight minutes on blockchain, I've never mentioned the word Bitcoin. Okay, so the same people who talked about blockchain are also the same people, and I will come to that pretty quickly. I'm intentionally staying away, but I will connect the dots at the end. But the takeaway is blockchain is a technology for infusing trust into business networks. That's what it does. Now, how does it do what it does? There's four things that make up this technology. And I'm intentionally not going to tell you how it is done, because that's a lecture altogether, separately. But I'm just going to tell you the pieces that are coming together. The one is a shared ledger. As I said, when a transaction happens, when you record the loading of a ship, the movement of goods, the taking of a loan, a change of address, whatever be the digital transaction, there is a shared ledger amongst all the participants in where that data is recorded. So that's one. And it happens through a process called consensus. And there are different techniques that are getting explored. It's a nascent technology, but we sort of know how to do that pretty well now. The second is privacy and confidentiality. I told you the thing that was causing that spaghetti before was people were not sure. I'm not going to share my data because I don't know who else is going to do that and assert my business. So what's happening now is advances in technology for security and cryptography that allows businesses to share data in this network while controlling the privacy and confidentiality of the data. So that's the second big building block. The third one is what's called smart contracts. Remember, businesses are eventually about agreements. You agree to give me a loan at a certain rate. You agree that I cannot change this unless you know, you, you know, the rate changes so much. Whatever that agreement is, is now digitally captured using something called a smart contract. Think of it as a piece of program and a code that lives on the blockchain and controls the changes of information. And the most important part, and this is, why, this is what keeps our regulators and governments happy, and why there is a lot of interest in this technology, by its very nature, blockchain provides an auditable mechanism, a way, because it can't be tampered with, that you can go back historically and understand what's happening. So it keeps a lot of the folks who are policing the world happy. And that's important because that policing, that regulatory structure is critical for business networks to run. So that's where smart contracts add value. Last but not the least, and this is the foundation, all of this 
drives trust into business networks. It provides visibility and transparency, controlled transparency, because you must still have that privacy, but a level of transparency that allows businesses to be inefficient. Let's go back to that logistics example. One of the biggest pain points in the industries today is empty containers. There are countries that export a lot, don't import as much. There are countries that import a lot, export don't as much. So what happens? Ships go with a lot of baggage on one side, often come back empty. And a lot of that is because of lack of visibility on supply and demand, and a network like this promises to really transform. And that's just one example of the type of transformation that industry is going to have. So since I took on the challenge, I have to explain at least one technical idea to you, and you're going to tell me whether I did that reasonably well or not. So I'm going to pick on the whole immutability. How do we make it hard? Because we just think you can copy a file and edit it. So how do you make it really, really hard for something to be quote unquote tamper proof? So here is that 45 seconds of technology. The basic idea of creating, and this is where the name comes from, by the way, blockchain, chain of blocks, it comes from the fact that the way this ledger is maintained, Im imagine a, a block. Each block shows a bunch of transactions. This could be a ship moving, somebody taking a loan, somebody changing an address, whatever that business ecosystem is. And what you do is, when some number of transactions are finished, you create a new block. But the smart thing you do when you create the new block is, you store at the beginning of the new block something that summarizes the previous block. In the technology world, we call it a hash. It doesn't matter what it's called. Um, it's just something that represents the contents in block zero. What that means is you can look at that hash and block zero, and if block zero got tampered, the hash would be different. You store that in block one, then you keep listing all the transactions in block one. Some point you close off block one, you create a new block. In that store, the hash of block one, which includes the hash that was sitting from the previous block. You keep building it up. Now, why does this help? This helps because imagine you are in block 100. You want to change something that happened before. You have to be able to change all the blocks and recompute all of that little yellow boxes before you can change any information. Because otherwise, somebody will very quickly find out, oh, this hash doesn't match. Somebody is playing um, something fancy here. So the hardness comes because you link everything together. And as these transactions grow, for somebody to go back and change something, they have to get, they have to take control over all of these blocks and make a consistent change. That makes it almost impossible to do. I don't know whether I got it, but hopefully that gives you a sense of the principle behind one of the important properties of the blockchain. Now, a lot of the, the, the pain points and the benefits you see here. What does blockchain do? It saves time. How does it save time? You will be amazed. The number of times containers arrive at a destination and just sit, wait for the paper documents to arrive before they, they actually can be opened. That results in food spoilage. It results in latency. So there is a reduction in time. All of that paperwork and interaction reduces, has a lot of cost. Blockchain promises to reduce that cost. Risk, risk happens because you don't know what the other guy is doing. And so now blockchain provides transparency and visibility that reduces risk. And that's why the financial industry is starting to really love it. And as I said, it increases trust. But I think the most important part is why now? And there are two reasons why this is starting to become an important technology. One is all those ingredients. Remember I talked about consensus. I talked about the idea of a blockchain, the crypto. All of that technology is at a level of maturity now that we're able to put it all together into this thing called a blockchain and actually roll it out and, and deploy it. So that's obviously just a maturity of the technology. Second, this comes back to Bitcoin. Those of you who know what Bitcoin is, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, a, a, a public network that got kicked off, I believe almost, a, I think, a decade back maybe, maybe I'm getting my dates wrong, but which think of it as, was an application of blockchain to do cryptocurrency, a way to exchange value. Now, we leave cryptocurrency aside, but what Bitcoin demonstrated was all of these technology building blocks are ready. It was an operational example of a working blockchain system. So the world stood back and said, hey, I may not be doing cryptocurrency, but it looks like I can start doing blockchain. So it was an exemplar. The third reason why blockchain now, and I think that's the most critical is, I think it's a technology for the emerging era. And what is this era? 
This era is an era of ecosystems. We've already seen, I told you, that we don't realize it. We think that we touch each other, we touch another company, other entity. Almost every one of those is really an ecosystem. Many of you might have seen this example, right? The world's biggest taxi company doesn't own taxis. The world's biggest vacation rental company, Airbnb, doesn't own real estate. Why does that work? Because these are all companies operating in ecosystems. They deliver value by operating in an ecosystem and providing a service that none of the other parties do. And we know that this is an age in which innovation is going to happen in the ecosystem. What does an ecosystem have? It has multiple parties. And if multiple parties, what technology do you need so that they can all operate efficiently? You need a technology like blockchain that allows them to share information in a secure, trusted fashion effectively. So to me, the third and most important reason why this is a technology for now is the fact that we are already in and we are going to increasingly move into a world of ecosystems. And I think blockchain is set up to be the digital foundation of that emerging ecosystem. And we are already starting to see this. That's a recent study that said about 15% of trailblazers are already deploying. So this is not some vision of the future 10 years from now. It's happening here and now. Of course, early stages, but it's happening. We anticipate that in the next couple of years, we were going to hit that mass adoption, where in many industries, in many countries, you're going to have blockchain systems actually powering daily transactions. You may not realize it. You know, you probably do what you do, but in the back end, something would have changed dramatically, and hopefully for the better for all of us. And then there will always be, of course, a maturity of the technology, but that's the estimation. And what's going to happen, and this is for those of you who are technologists and want to know, this is pretty cool, what do I need to do? I think we are barely starting here on the power of what the technology is. I think there's tremendous work to be done in terms of improving it, scaling it up to be at a national or an international level. There is a lot of still concerns about privacy and confidentiality. So that's going to get a lot of brain power is now starting to get applied to do each of these challenges. And I do believe that as blockchain systems start to become repositories of data, you will see artificial intelligence coming together with this technology in a very big way. So to summarize, here is a technology that I think is going to transform. It will do for business ecosystems and trusted transactions what the internet did for knowledge sharing and communication. So in that sense, I think it's truly a, a, a technology for the emerging era. With that, thank you for the opportunity and the time.